So because of Nero, many fathers left their lands, and those lands then were blessed with gold, mining, different mining. They took their uh, gold from Africa to their countries. So no people, uh, then no one even know what gold means. You know, some of look at Kauri. Because they know Kauri is not that expensive for five days. That is why our father was even happy uh, holding Kauri like something that is even, because they, they will be telling that Kauri is very nice, but they won't take Kauri from Africa to their country to do what? They just keep it at, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, they hold it at collection, one, mm, of, their one of their collections. One of their monuments. Yes. Just drop it. Just drop it somewhere. Mm. But the good they need, they will take the good along. Now bring Miro. And when her father will say, Hey, I can see myself. Yeah, come, 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 come. Madam, come and see yourself. We jubilate in Miro. What is the essence of seeing yourself? So all this started when Africans were able, were able to open their eyes. They understand the, when the exposure, when we have the exposure, more exposure. More exposure that, That's the reason why you have this reason. revolt. Yes, and when when our people were able to go through history. Mm. You know, it is history that will tell you that when you go to Ogun State, there's a place they call uh, No Return, Land of No Return or so. Who are those people that are taken to the Land of No Return? Our fathers. begin this conversation taking our quote first from Bruce Bruno de Masquita who is a political scientist he once said no fool stays in power for years on the end when there are so many generals sons and wives waiting in the wing to launch a coup Oops, that's a deep one. Ahmed Ben Bella is an Algerian politician soldier and socialist revolutionary he once said Everywhere that the struggle for national freedom has triumphed, once the authorities agreed, there were military coup d'etat that overthrew their leaders. That is the result time and time again. Mm. Somehow we see these things happen already. All right, so my last one is from Eduardo Galeno, who is an Algerian journalist, writer, and novelist. He once said, most of wars or military coups or invasions are done in the name of democracy against democracy. All right, now let's see how this goes related to what we'll be discussing today. Very warm greetings and welcome to The Conversation. We're reaching you from Kaftan's television studio here in the nation's capital, Abuja. I am Annabelle Oji. Today, we'll turn our attention to the Gabonese coup that is ongoing and then with the oyster president. You have a group of top Gabonese military officers appear on TV early Wednesday uh, morning on that's on 30th, 8th, 2023, to announce that they have taken power following President Ali Bongo's re-election. Uh, appearing on state television channel Gabon 24, officers said that they, are represent that they represented all security and defense forces in the Central African nation. The soldiers said the election results were cancelled. All borders closed until further notice and states... Um, institutions dissolved the officers also said and quote in the name of the gabonese people we have decided to defend the peace by putting an end to the current regime end of quote now tensions were high on saturday's um, presidential election the presidential the um, parliamentary and legislative elections where which actually saw bongo claim victory extending his family 56 year grip and power the opposition claimed that multiple electoral malpractices and have been pushing for change in the oil and cocoa rich but yet poverty stricken nation. The coup makes Gabon the latest African country to be taken over by the military, by the military rather, following Burkina Faso, Mali, and the latest Niger Republic, which has prompted threats and invasion by the Nigeria led ECOWAS bloc. Now, in the meantime, a video surfaced online where the oyster Gabonese president Ali Bongo himself was begging his international friends to 
make noise following um the wednesday school in the 51 second video bongo claimed or uh, confirmed that he had been arrested and isolated from his son and wife who he said were held in another location born Alien Bernard Bongo on February 9, 1959 in Congo, Brazzaville. The 64-year-old was Gabon's president from 2009 when his Omar Bongo, who ruled Gabon almost 42 years from 1967, died. Meanwhile, the commander of the Republican Guard of uh, Gabon, that's General Bryce Claudia, who led the coup to oust the Democratically elected president of Ali Bongo has been linked with embezzlement and drug cases. The interest went agog Wednesday morning after the military junta in Gabon announced takeover of power from Bongo. Another coup in Africa after Nigeria's president, um, Niger's president, I beg your pardon, that's uh, Mohamed Bazoum's Oyston. Reports emerging after the successful coup, however, claimed that General Oligo, who is one of the most influential personalities in the United States of America, with more than one million US dollar according to a 2020 um, organized crime and corruption reporting project survey. Reading out more about um, the coup leader's profile, the publication said that um, General Oligo worked as a military attaché at the embassy of Gabon in Morocco and Senegal for 10 years prior to his current position. In addition, he was appointed head of the Republican Guard a year after Ali Bongo's stroke in October 2018. However, General Oligo was said to have been invited into so many controversial cases before his recent contribution in the origin of President Bongo, whose family has been on the seat of power for over five decades. Now, I will be having this conversation with um, uh, Lamina, Omoto Yossi, who is the executive director of World Institute for Peace, and we'll be talking about the um, Kong, the uh, um, Niger Republic coup. We'll talk about the uh, now the Gabon coup, and see how exactly we can bridge bring peace in all of this. I will see you after this timeout. Join us again, viewers. Welcome back. If you just joined us, this is The Conversation. We're reaching you from Captain's Television Studio here in the nation's capital, Abuja. Now we'll go straight to our conversation for today. And my guest is Lamina Kamaldin Omoto Yossi, who is Executive Director, World Institute for Peace. Great to have, to have you on the show again, sir. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, so um, let's go straight to our conversation for today. But then we'll, we'll, we'll kick start with the Gabon coup and all that has happened all through after the announcement by the military and then the takeover. So what are your thoughts with regards to the coup? First of all, it started with, uh, we're still talking about the Niger coup and now you have Gabon. Let's start in that regard. When you first saw that video, what was the first reaction that came to your mind? Uh, well, um, my first reaction when uh, I learned about the uh, news is, okay, how is this coming up in Africa at this uh, period of time? This is what our, our forefathers were fighting for. That, uh, excuse me, you know, they were fighting to have a democracy, I mean, true democracy in Africa. Now, and some of the countries were able to achieve this. And why, are this, uh, uh, why is this happening again in Africa continent? Uh, and in my mind, I started thinking of what will be the uh, positive agent of this. And I learned that, you know, if uh, I don't want to fault that the uh, president that was ousted is that he, he has spent about 11 years. But is that, isn't that actually a fault though? Yeah, I don't want to fault. Spend, spend this, how many years there? This is where I'm going. I don't want to use that base to fault him. Okay. So I will make the analysis. Uh, and again, the, his father also has spent about, uh, spent about 41 years on the throne before he, uh, the son became the president. But if you look at what happened in Libya, mm. you look at what happened in Libya, you see, what people, when they wanted to fight uh, Gaddafi that time, when the Western wanted to fight Gaddafi, they started from where they know we can pick a message that he has still so long on the throne, mm. on the uh, the presidency throne, you see. Okay, 
they now selling the message that why would single person be ruling you people? This is the only message sued to people of Libya then. Mm. Okay, people flee up. Okay, ah, so, we, so they were just trying to create yes, that discord. Yes, with yeah, that we, message. We, we won't accept this. We won't accept, okay, you have, and these people are the people that have joined the government of Gaddafi. They forgot that even Gaddafi has spent those years. But mm. when the Westerner came down and they wanted to fight Gaddafi, the only thing they could use to fight Gaddafi was he has stayed so long on that throne. Mm. And when you look at what is happening in Libya today, those people who joined the League of the Westerners who came to fight and kill Gaddafi, they are suffering. Gaddafi was alive, he spent those years, Gaddafi was able to make an artificial sea in that country where ships, one of the, those, uh, 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 one, let me say one of the biggest uh, sea in, uh, that has entered this Africa can be able to move on that sea. That is one. Second, when you, became, when you become a uh, 25 year old in uh, Libya, you have some certain amount that will be going to your account every month. So, and when you want to have, uh, you want to get married in that country, you also have. And when you look at during the era of Gaddafi, you can look at the the, the rate of the uh, their currency there to dollar. Hmm. And Gaddafi was able to he, he made sure that he did not allow anybody to just come and be molesting their currency over there. When you come. To work in Libya, you spend your money in Libya. I have some people who are, who are living in Libya during those period. When they came down to Nigeria, they had their means to send money. They will first come to Nigeria, and after two weeks, they will be able to send their money down to Nigeria. You see, mm. that was this man was able to give the country what they needed that time, but because of his agitation against the Westerners, so they look for something to fight him, and they were able to capture and kill him. Okay, now let me come back to Gabon. Look at what happened in Gabon. The father spent 41 years, and the son also has spent uh, 11 years. If that 41 and 11 year hood have delivered through democracy mm. to the people, mm. I want to tell you that majority of the masses in Gabon will never support the military coup. Mm. Because it is never good, it is never good enough to have a... Uh, uh, military uh, era again in Africa. Okay, we're going to come back to that because yeah. a lot of people don't agree. Uh, they will tell you that it is better to have military government than what the kind of democracy that we are seeing at the moment. Okay, yeah, that's so, so, so now, because you talked about how much um, you have Ali Gabon and then his uh, father Omar Gabon has um, been in the throne for over 55 decades. And then you just be wondering that the country or that nation that is an oil rich country and also cacao they're very good with it you just begin to wonder what exactly is wrong so what why do you think that not just them but african leaders they have that mentality of seat tight leadership is either i stay here and when i'm done i'm living here for my family and let me borrow that word it's not like i i, I mean no disrespect to anyone that um emilio Kong. So if I leave, it is if you leave, it's my turn. That's what it means for some people. I'm not. I'm not trying to put a meaning to what um, President Bola made. You know, but I'm just saying that. So for some people, that's what they feel like. It's my turn. It's my son's turn. Why do we have that mentality of always that sit tight mentality? Yeah, it is quite unfortunate that uh, some of our leaders, especially when they even become the leader of uh, their respective country, they want they, they want to host that seat. They don't want to leave it. Mm. Even some of them are on the... When you look at the Gabon, when the father was the president, I think this one was a minister of foreign affairs or so for some years. Later, he was a minister of defense. The, when his father was training, I mean, this man mm. that was just uh, being... Uh, uh, Hoisted. Yes. So, when you look at it, in Africa, it is not good. We call for true democracy. If they have given the true democratic uh, governance to people of those countries, no one will ever support this thing. Because those people that are now shouting, are now jubilating their military, I want to tell you, the next five, ten years, they will know what is. Maybe now you can see, people can just go online, you can abuse uh, any democratic government anyhow, you can do this and that. Try it to those people <laughs> at the military. They will kill you before the uh, overnight. So, we have 
there is we have advantages of having a military era as well as we also have but we can never the worst democratic system the work democratic system is far better than what we can call the good of military uh rulership that is the that is the reality so People who are jubilating today that military has taken over the government. We even saw that where they had, they even started buying beer for their military men. Yes, that's where I'm, that I'm going. Those people that are jubilating today, I want to tell you, they might cry at the end of the day. But they're just, aren't, aren't they just happy that for over five decades? But, but do you know what? Do you know what? What I just want to advise uh, the uh, leader of this uh, military coup is he should be able to talk to his men. That maybe within a few months or within a few weeks, they will declare democracy again. He himself can also contest. Oh, so are you saying that? Are you actually saying that they just bring back the democracy? Wear your khaki and start, then later go and remove it and wear your brother. Yeah, uh, well, okay, let, look at it. If not only in Africa, look at the world. Most of them that have ruled, in, that have ruled this world, most of them they were military leader before. Go and check. Even check Nigeria. Obasanjo was a military. Uh, this was a military man. Uh, Buari was a military man. Look at all of them. I think it's only uh, the Umar Musa Yaradua. And let me say, Chinobu is the only is the only civilian that we can say we have a pure civilian governing this country since that time. Is it that your father or your mother has become a military? This go and check them. Go and check uh, Umar Musa and let me say, uh, okay, Jonathan also is mm. part of them. So what what I want to advise is the man, the leader of this military coup, should be able to declare to bring back democracy. He can also contest. Let me tell you, it is not because of the masses. It's because he knows he has the power to hijack the government, and he have every evidences. He have every uh, materials. To fight the the president that are hosted. that is just it. Look at what happened in Egypt. It is because they know they have the power to hijack the government. I think the government is giving them like, okay, let's see, let see what is happening in Nigeria. Like, I read the news where uh, the president of uh, Rwanda mm. he retired nine hundred and forty-two military leaders. The Cameroon president mm. also made changes, changes of the leadership. So, so but today the Rwanda president has retired men only at 42. Today he retired all those military general, general, some people, lieutenant general. Are you general. sensing danger yeah. or fear? It is fear because these people, no soldiers, they can be communicating one another from one country to another. Let, let's try, let's try, let's try. And you see those countries. That have been like that is because their leaders they have neglected their responsibilities as leaders of those countries. If they have given what the military needed before now, or if they have empowered the military within the context of concern of their country, and to that means if they have been given what democracy needs to the masses of those countries. Nobody will ever support them. Even the military men will never come and say they want to hijack the government. So are you saying because that if they had actually done well politically, democratically, in every sphere, especially, let's use that um, uh, Gabon, for, for instance. If um, Ali Gabon ha um, uh, has done well in his um, country, that the Gabonese would accept the fact that he can rule till forever. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. Look at it. When, when they killed uh, Gaddafi, when they wanted to kill Gaddafi, many people in Libya did not support that move. If you can check. Many people, the highest percentage of people in Libya did not support that move. But because of the force, because of the force, the international force that supported the minority who wanted to kill this man. And after that, people are complaining. As, as I have people living in Libya. I have people who had lived in Libya before, and I have people who are living in Libya right now. As them, 
Let them make the comparison between Gaddafi era and the person there. Let them make the comparison. Let them tell you the comparison. Let them do the comparison of uh, the Gaddafi era and the current era in Libya. They will tell you. I have seen video where people were crying that they killed Gaddafi. Where people were crying that they are the one, the masses are the one who brought this hardship on themselves in but Libya. Was it, isn't that typical of uh, most people, human beings? When um, President Bola, uh, uh, Muhammad Buhari was here, a lot of people said, oh no, let him go. He left. And then you have most people coming out to say, oh, I just wish we still had President um, Bola, uh, President uh, Buhari. Or some people come back to say, oh, I wish it was still the Jonathan's era. You always have human beings have... The uh, where is that going, but you, there are some certain things that are very dear. The, now, talking of Gabon, nobody can ever come and be defending Gabon. And uh, we have a kind of uh, fortress about it. If I continue to say, okay, what they did in Gabon is not good, thousands of people will say, no, they will be supporting the coup. Because there is no good governance in that country. We all know. Look at what is happening in Niger. I am not supporting uh, military uh, as military is taking over the the government. I am not supporting, but I am so telling you that if those uh, civilian president, civilian government, if they are giving good governance to their people, nobody will ever think that and people will never support them. So that's it. But the issue of Libya is quite different to what what happened in Gabon and Niger. Mm. That's it. So why, why exactly do you think that um, the West African uh, the West African countries are actually revolting against their colonial masters, just like France? What, what exactly is the reason why you see this revolt at this time? It is history. It is history. This is what is happening now. You know, before many people were ignorant of what those people came to do in our land in Africa. It was thereafter when we were able to educate enough and when our people were able to uh, were, were able to expose more like we have many africans who are living over there they have met with some of those leaders they have heard from them they even know they also have their issues over there so those are the people now coming out these people they came here to do this now before you know if you if you know the the reason if you know why we are using umbrella or what about the issue of a uh, mirror mm. in Africa? You will know why people are now reporting their colonial masters mm. in Africa now. You can search that why are we using it? What brought the idea of mirror? And what brought the idea of umbrella? So since you're here, just tell us for our viewers who are doing your search. <laughs> okay, so now, you now if somebody just come to you now and say, okay, look at this mirror. Uh, I have something. If I give you, you will be seeing yourself, you see how beautiful you are, you see how God has created you. Are you getting? And, and before I can give you this, this land from this place to that place, you will give me, you sign. That time, they brought the idea of uh, thumb printing. They will hold our father's hand like this, put it on the ink, ink and put on this thing. Those people that cannot read, they make agreement. When you go to where they keep a uh, document you see many things so because of mirror many father left their lands and those lands then were blessed with gold mining different mining they took their uh, gold from africa to their countries so no people uh, then no one even know what good means you know some of look at cowry because they know curry is not that expensive for five day. That is why our father was even happy uh, holding curry like something that is even... Because they, they will be telling that curry is very nice. But they won't take curry from Africa to their country. To do what? They just keep it at... Uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, they hold it at collection. One, mm, of, their one of their collections. their monuments. Yes. Just drop it. Just drop it somewhere. Mm. But the good they need, they will take the good along now bring mirror and when our father will say hey i can see myself yeah come 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 madam come and see yourself the jubilee mirror what is the essence of seeing yourself so all this started when africans were, were able to open their eyes 
they understand the, when the exposure, when we have the exposure, more exposure, more exposure. That, that's the reason why you have this reason. revolt. Yes, and when when our people were able to go through history, hmm. you know, it is history that will tell you that when you go to Ogo State, there's a place they called uh, No Return, land of No Return, or so. Who are those people that are taken to the land of no return? Our fathers. Many families lost their, their uh, breadwinners those days. Their breadwinners those days. Because those people might, be, today, they might be the president. Some of them might even become a president before they uh, leave this world. But that time, somebody would just come and say, uh, you give me two of your children as slave. And I'll bring an umbrella for you. This umbrella, when the rain is, uh, when there is raining, you use umbrella to cover your, and you will leave your child. Your child will follow them. And once your child enters the land of no return, you will see your child forever. It is history that tells us, that shows us where the land of no return is in this country. It is history that let us know that these people came to Africa not to give us any it's not that they did not give us benefit but what we need exactly we are not given to our father it is history and the exposure brought the history so if the ex exposure brought history and then revolt but then most um west african countries they're still indebted to their colonial masters they still depend on them for a lot of things so if you are, you've decided that because you've been exposed, you understand how much they have used th these people and called them slaves at a point, but you're still indebted to them. So whoever you're indebted to, it's, you're still under. The that, person is still on top of you. That is, that is why, that is why if, if you look at what happened in, uh, in Gabon, it is, a, it is a matter of reporting. They don't want to hear anything from France since the day before yesterday. Look at what happened in Egypt. Read what that man, the leader of the coup, have been saying. He do not want to react or hear anything from any leader from uh, Francophone countries. Mm. He's even ready to dialogue with his people in Africa, but no want to hear anything from the Francophone countries. Hope you are getting. So people are refuting those countries. Let me tell you. I want to tell. It is not this. If if care is not taken. That in my even extend to some francophone countries as well. Because when we see where we have the majority, uh, where, 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 where this thing, the poverty is quite uh, going higher every day in Africa, mm. is those francophone countries. Go to Togo, go and see what is happening in Togo. If you spend one week in Undo, in no time, you spend one week. Just ask people that you want to go to some villages. You see Togolese who has PhD, who has masters of science in any course, that is there working as a labor in Nigeria. I want to narrate things to you. You will know that we got it wrong in this country and we are still getting it wrong up to now. In, in this in Africa and we are still getting it wrong. Up to date, mm. so it is. It is when people are able to refute what they describe as oppression, as uh, oppression. Sorry, yes, that we can be able to see the light of the day and uh, to have a true democracy in Africa. Mm. All right. So now, because you talked, you said um, that uh, because now that they're exposed, but I still ask. I'm, I'm still going to ask that same question. Most West African countries are actually indebted to their uh, to most of their colonial masters. They do. Um, I recall. I think it was the president of Ghana when he went for um, the summit, and then he said that Africans are not beggars, but yet they still depend on them. If you don't want to call it begging, somehow you still depend on them for your COVID-19 vaccine. Somehow you still depend on them for loans. So you, you are still, you will definitely always be, uh, I don't want to use that word slave. You always be under your master, regardless. Yeah, but no, thank you so, so much. I saw, I saw, at what point are, are, are Africans supposed to liberate them, themselves, by themselves first? from all of this i think it is it's really not about the coup first yeah what, what i would just say about that is you see in africa uh, the masses are not ready to 
majority of the masses are not ready to endure to have what we call a good governance. And what caused that is because we are having uh, multiple or, uh, yes, let me see, we have uh, multiple political parties. And because of the different uh, opinions, the interests, that is why we are getting it wrong. If, if it is something that we have just like two, we are practicing like two or three system of uh, party, political parties in Africa, we will have it so soon. One, if you, be, if you become a president of this country today, your people will be expecting you not to let people be blaming them for giving, you, for giving them you as the president, like for bringing you up as president from their political party. Your people will be telling you, they'll be mounting prayer on you, uh, oh God, please don't do this. Oh God, people will be talking, people will be talking. And you also, you also be looking at, I want to become president for the second time. You are getting. So, but if we can be able to make use of the resources we have in Africa, we will, be, we will stop the, the act of becoming a beggar mm. in the faces of those uh, developed uh, countries. Mm. Like, look at Nigeria. The president said you don't want to borrow. If he can be able to maintain that for this uh, four year, for the first time tenure, if he can be able to do that, the world will give him kudos. <coughs> the, the question is, would he be able to the, maintain the, 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 I said, if he can be able to do so, how they can do it? One, if they can be able to come up with ideas of getting internal uh, idea the revenue, which will not affect the masses so much. That is one. And again, those ideas, if they can be able to make use of it judiciously, from there, we can get it right. You know, we have many resources. If you go to Bayesa, you go to the data state, you go to all the uh, Rifa state, where we have Kudo, you know Nigeria can feed on Nigeria. We don't need to be going out and borrowing. They should be coming to Nigeria to borrow. All right. It's clearly more that we need to unbundle from this conversation and we'll try to as much as we can to do that after this time out. I'll see you again. Join us again. I know three of them. One among them is a, is a former governor and we have one, uh, I think a former chairman of NDDC or so. That if they leave the honorable off your mic yes if, if they leave if they leave uh, a mayfield today i want to tell you the next mayfield we find is he have uh, uh, something disease of uh, maybe he has heart the heart problem or he has a leg problem or this the second you just see that he may feel he appear in the court with one uh, with one uh, it might even be on the right that may be suffering from a kind of disease also but if we can have that boldness from the from the dss that they can hold them let, let i'm not talking that they should not obey order of the court but they should make sure they do their investigations before they release the mayfield and bawa Welcome back. If you just joined us, this is The Conversation. We are reaching you from Kaftan's television studio here in the nation's capital, Abuja. If you just joined us, you've actually missed out on the first leg of the conversation, but now we'll move straight to the second segment of the show. And my guest on the show today is Lamina um, Kamaldin Omoto Yossi, who is Executive Director of World Institute for Peace. So before we went on that break, we've actually talked about quite a number of things, but now I saw um, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, uh, his first statement um, after when all that happened in Gabon, his first response to the Wednesday coup in Gabon, he said, and quote, contagious autocracy is spreading across Africa. And he's working with um, other heads of state in the continent to defend the democracy. He also insists that rule of law must prevail in Africa. And then I'm wondering, when you talk about contagious um, 
autocracy is widely spreading and you're talking about rule of law at some point we also have our own internal problems we have our own internal um, issues yes i recall that he said he's going to govern by the rule of law but someone will come back and remind you that emifele is still in prison he does, he's still in custody or incarceration which, whichever way and you still have the um, chairman, the former chairman of ESC, AFCC, and no one is saying anything about them yet. And then you come out, you, you say that we are having this contagious autocracy. Uh, what are your thoughts in that regard? Yeah, let me let me let me first start from the uh, you mentioned the Mefili and uh, the Bawa, the AFCC who, uh, chairman at the custody. Yes, let me tell you. You know, we have there is uh, there is division of labor in governance. The executive arms, they have their own way of operating, and the legislative and judiciary, you are getting. And there's constitution, we also consider we should have, we have uh, in the constitution, we have uh, the segment of, uh, the security segment that hold the security of a nation. So, and that, they, they stand on their own, and they work together with judiciary, are you getting? So, if... We want to talk about the issue of uh, uh, Emefiele and Bawa. We are talking of the constituent, constituent uh, autocracy that I said uh, uh, we need uh, the rule of law in, Af in Africa. That it is a good statement. He made a good statement. The issue of uh, Bawa and Emefiele. You see, whenever you have a case at court, the case is not only in the hand of the judiciary. There is the security who brought that case to the judiciary. And as long as they have a continued investigation about any matter, it is better they to hold, keep them there. It is better they hold suspects. Because you know what is happening in this country. We are in this country and we also we we are part of those who are calling for good governance. We have seen in this country somebody who stole a fund that can take care of millions, multi-millions of Nigerians in this country. And he or she was able to leave the country for abroad. Since that time, she has never come to Nigeria. I, 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 are you going Bridget. to call, put a name to it? I don't want to put the name. People know the person I'm talking about. Most people do not know I the don't, name. I don't want to put the name. That's yeah. Secondly, we have seen in this country where they release the uh, DSS release somebody a suspect because the court is to release the person, and the court asked the person to come back. The person floated the order of the court. The next thing was we saw was he said he was sick. The second day they put something on the neck like this. That's another thing. Till today, they haven't recovered the money from the person. That's third one. I know three of them. One among them is a, is a former governor. And we have one, uh, I think, a former chairman of NDDC or so. That's, if they leave... The Honorable, off your mic. Yes. If, if they leave, if they leave uh, a Mayfield today, I want to tell you, the next Mayfield we find is he have... Uh, uh, something disease of uh, maybe he has heart the heart problem or he has a leg problem or this the second you just see that immediately appear in the court with one uh, with one uh, it might even be on the right that may be suffering from a kind of disease also but if we can have that boldness from the from the dss that they can hold them let, let i'm not talking that this will not obey order of the court but they should make sure they do their investigations before they release the Mayfield and Bawa. The Mayfield has caused a lot of damages to this country that we all know. Somebody who printed Naira, who printed our currency, who said they printed currency with about two point something trillion or one point something trillion, there. and the money they printed was not even up to five hundred million. He was working. Under, he was uh, working on that direction, though. Which direction? He, he had people, he, well, he well, had someone he was answering to. Let me tell you, Emi Fili was acting on his own direction. When Emi Fili refused to listen to the order of the Supreme Court, where they said he should list ban on the old currency, people were saying the uh, uh, former president was the one 
who, who was behind it that is not do this and that. It was when Garba Seu released a, mo, a, a memo that Mr. President is not aware that Emefili has not lifted the ban on the old currency. That was the night, the same night, I think 30 minutes after Emefili released the memo that the CBN has lifted the ban on the old currency. That way, Emefili was acting on his own. Me, I had not support the opinion that is the one who advised the former president to bring about the new currency of it. Uh, not to concern me about that. But the issue that the, uh, the, the judiciary, the Supreme Court, gave an order to a governor of central bank to lift ban on the old currency, and he refused. When they ever wanted to arrest Amy Feely on that case, you know what happened? The former chief of uh, defense staff, Irabo, gave an order that soldiers would go and protect him. That day, over 200 soldiers were there. And they said, we are looking at them like this. They were not able to enter the CBN. And they were there for almost two days. I think the two or three days after, the presidency denied that he did not know anything about it. It was later that we learned that somebody called from the presidency. He called the chief of the first staff. That one gave order to the soldiers to protect the Mayfield. Without the knowledge of Mr. President. If not, that the government said, I did not know anything about the issue that uh, Mayfield refused to leave the ban on the old currency after when the Supreme Court has given order. Has given order. It was that day that Mayfield lifted the ban on the currency. How can right. somebody, a single person, be given so much as upon millions of Nigerians? And so because of that, he should be, he should stay because incarcerated? Not, not only that, how much did Mayfield use? How much did he use to print about 400 or 600 billion Naira that he printed. How much? He spent almost 2 trillion Naira. He should be able to account, to bring about the account of how he spent the money. And the money was released to him. The president signed the money for him. And there is certain amount that he said he should print. He should be able to give. And mind you, there is a tape also, a first note. Where Mifele was giving order to one director of finance or so, that how can we do this? How can we do this money? Uh, you can transfer it to this, thing. you can transfer this amount to this. You should be able to explain this to the DSS. All right. All right, let's, let's, we've actually diverted from our uh, initial uh, conversation and then moved to Mifele and Bauer's matter. But then let's, let's come back to our conversation about the Gabonese and the Gabon coup. Now you have, uh, which, the, to the extent that you have most colonial masters always wanting their um, West African leaders to stay in power for a long time. Someone ca uh, uh, um, asked on social media, because we always take our social media messages, and then someone asked that, could it be that uh, it is because most of these West African um, leaders, they always have, they always, uh, have um, issues of alleged um, corruption, misappropriation of funds and diversion of funds and then they pick all of these monies and go and dump in their own countries. So that's the reason why you just have them agree, okay, just stay there forever, like you have in France. Now you ha we, are, we are talking about Gabon. Tomorrow we might be talking about Cameroon. Because like you talked about how um, Paul Bia has decided to rejig yeah. his military structure and then you talked about Rwanda, Rwanda yeah. has rejigged his military structure. So does it have anything to do with the fact that after all, your leaders are even corrupt, so we are helping them hide their funds. So that's the reason why you have this tete a tete. Uh, what I want to talk is uh, you see, at times, forcing out is very is a key in any government, like when masses force out. Let I want to embrace, uh, I want to implore uh, the masses in Africa, the masses in any given country, that we should be able to force out, whether we use our social media to force out whether we use any means like print media to voice out, whether we use the televised means to voice out, to let the go let let take our government, let take them responsible for anything that happens. Let us like what happened in Nigeria in 2020, you can see the message. The message brought a lot of development to this country within that time, to this period. Are you talking of um, COVID nineteen during COVID nineteen? Not COVID nineteen, the answers of eighteen. 
the okay. protest. The, yeah, the October 20th. See, you can see that wide, that very huge voice. So if, like, each country in Africa must be able to have the template that nobody, nobody should use more than one or two terms as president. Like, if in a country, a one term is four years, maybe you still have opportunity to go for second term. It should not be that. It should not, it should not more than that. That every country, the masses of every country must be able to be advocating for that. We have CSO, civil society organization. They should be able to be advocating for this. And I believe uh, with what is happening now, is what some other countries who have not been hijacked by the military, they will be making uh, changes. Mm. It is what people call as it, mm. I, I believe. All right. Mm. All right. So now since Africans or African leaders or Africans, they actually, most people are against, even you, because I hear you say that if you, the worst um, democracy is far better than the best military uh, regime. Yeah. So now if we are, if you agree that military yeah, I agree. rule, I agree, yes. if you agree that military mm -hmm. rule is, is not, if, is not at all one thing that we should think of, we should talk of democracy. And then some people will tell you that even in the democracy, they are not even, um, working according to what the tenets of that democracy states. So some other persons will come out and say, don't you think we should just try, um, the traditional rulership where values and norms were respected. Do you agree? Uh, uh, yeah, it, 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 is, it is good, but that era has gone. That can never come back again. <laughs> that can never come back again. That, you know, there is, you know, I, we talk about education, we talk about exposure, so we talk about history. So that can never come back again. Because, you know, they, have co they came to Nigeria, to, to Africa, to tell us that going to school is the best. That time, when the rulership was still in existence, there was nothing like education. You get a father rule, they ruled themselves and things were in order but the development was so low that time development was so low so there's exposure so why not add probably tech exposure to um, traditional rulership uh, uh, that, that, this is where i'm going you see if if we want to go back to traditional rulership now we first having we first start having issue of the uh, uh the traditional compounds like the royal houses mm. that's where the issue will start <laughs> you just okay. see that one day your president will just talk like this start a, uh, splitting a blood or this you know because we will start using the magic ones <laughs> we will start everything <laughs> voodoo as voodoo nobody will want to listen to anybody I mean, I never from our we are, i'm also from a royal this thing i'm attached to this one person can just go and create another palace <laughs> that is my father. Let me be ruling my area like this. And mind you, we have numerous traditional rulers today. We have numerous traditional rulers. Even in a, in a city, there are some cities that have about three, four, five kings. Mm. And almost all of them will be claiming that I am the leader. I am the leader in the history. I am the leader in this history. I am the, my father came from this to this. My mother is the creator of where he is. <laughs> my this thing. Even that is happening in Nigeria. It's happening in Southwest, where we have seen a king telling another one that uh, that throne. I am the person who is entitled to the throne because in the history, my father was the one who came from uh, this place to this place. Is the one who created that throne and this. So we can't go back to that era. The only one, what we need now is. The government should be able to recognize our traditional rulers. They should be able to let them also have their say in the mm. government. Because those traditional rulers, they also have an idea. Because they have feed messages of what their forefathers have used to govern the uh, domain when they, were when they were reigning. So, government should be able to make use of traditional rulers. They should be able to let them also have say in any government. So, mm. But taking of that, we should go back to traditional rulers if it won't work. Hmm. All right, so I'm just wondering, what exactly, how exactly do you think that this will be viewed in the eye of the um, Western countries, especially where you have um, most African countries now deciding that, okay, they want to return back to military rule and all that has happened, the coups from, you've, we talk, you've started, uh, you've had some other countries, Guinea, you had Mali, you had Niger, now um, uh, Gabon. Now, let's take a, a question from our um, social media 
post someone sent a question he says which country will be the next coup d'etat destination in central africa after gabon and then he, he states some six countries equatorial guinea cameroon congo democratic republic of congo central africa um republic and chad but then he reminds us that in the other news, Paul Bia, who is 90 years of age, has ruled Cameroon from 1975 as Prime Minister and 1982 till date as President, just changed his military bodyguards and army service chiefs. We've talked about that. So, do you yeah. see this, act, act, like President um, Bola Ahmed Inubu, that it is contagious autocracy? Do you see this happening? And then someone will say, Nigerians, you better be very careful. Don't throw stones because you live in glass houses. Yeah, thank you so much. For me, you see, uh, I will not say much about that because I will never be part of those calling for uh, coup d'etat in Africa. I will never be part and I won't support any uh, military uh, regime. That's me. Democracy for peace, peace for democracy. That's me. So, this, because there is no way, if, if, you, if you have people who were part of uh, the struggles when they were clamoring to have a good governance in the past, like in the 80s, 1970s. You know what the military had done against them. So, so we, uh, now we are, we are on television talking about, uh, 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 talking about government. Now, if you dare it, why military is ruling? <laughs> Let me tell you, before you leave out of this place, like you rightly mentioned, uh, Emilio Khan or this, like you mentioned it at the start, if you try it, if you dare it, I want to tell you in the next two or leaving this place, so that might be at the at the door of your this thing here. You just take uh, something. Now, this is where I'm going. You see those countries like Cameroon. I want to advise that man instead of changing the position of those military, he should be able to resign. Our leader should be able to learn how to resign. Mm. If things are going, if as if are going so higher, so that we can have new reformation, he should be able to resign and call for election and withdraw himself from participating in the election. Mm. I made mean the Cameroon, I'm talking about the Cameroon, because he stayed too long, as we all know. So he should be able to resign. This is what he did that changing of uh, changing uh, one general to another office, one from office to another, this thing. Believing that some people that he has promoted two days ago, one day that they cannot betray him. Look at what happened during uh, Idi Amin. Sergeants started the coup and they, they supported him. Sergeants in Uganda, ordinary sergeants, not warrant officer, not a uh, sergeant officer started the coup and others, then the other generals supported him and they overthrew. Mm. So he should, he should just be able to learn that if he resign now, it, it, it will be a kind of grace to him and call mm. for democracy. He can also tell some of those uh, military leaders that if you have interest to contest, go and start campaigning. Mm. Okay, so because I, I had a guest, particular uh, guest um, that's um, an international human rights lawyer who said that bringing it back to Nigeria the man in Asorok, I'm using his words, now I'm quoting exactly what he said. He said the man in Asorok might, should be scared, especially in Nigeria. And maybe that's the reason why you have um, the military officers say no military man in Nigeria is allowed to go into politics. Do you sense fear around this? There is no fear. Nigeria can never join such. Nigeria is more wiser than all this, what's happening over there. And even as we are, as we, every day we are south in Nigeria, we are saying uh, Nigeria is not good, Nigeria is this and that. Still, you can never compare Nigeria to those countries. What happened in Ga when you go to Gabon, when you go to, to, I've been to Togo, I've been to Rwanda before. If you see what, <laughs> what the faces over there. I've been to Niger. I've been to a very... Uh, you, you know, Niger borders uh, have the same border, say the same border with Nigeria. I've been to a place here in Nigeria that we just trek from Nigeria to Niger. Nobody will stop you. Like you are trekking from Katapi extension to the other community there. That's how it is. So you see, those people, they are suffering. Look at many of them. Some of them are, are educated. In fact, to even stand on their own, no means. 
that can never happen here in Nigeria. It can never happen. And when you see the system, the Nigerian government is taking care of the military. You will see it is it is rotation. When this government go, another one will come in. Not that somebody will stay like for, for over five decades. For five, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. In the military, you know, during uh, Buhari era, we have a chief of defense staff. He has gone. We have a chief of army staff. We have a uh, chief of air staff. We have chief of naval staff. Nav they have gone. We have another one. Mm -hmm. And right. immediately when they do that uh, replacement, all others also will come up. Mm -hmm. So that's how it works in Nigeria. But over there, one person may be there for, for 19, 20, 20. If we, if we have, go and check. These people that are now uh, breaking up the, uh, mili, uh, the coup, some of those generals are there. They have given for retirement over 20 years. They did not go. In Gabon, in Niger, some of those, they are military leaders. They have given for retirement for over 20 years and they did not go. Same thing happening in their democratic democratic system also. All right, yeah. we actually uh, our time is fast spent, but now I'd like to ask you two questions, and I'd like you to take them in one breath. Now, as um, would you actually think that the forthcoming election will birth the dawn of a new era for the Gabonese people? That's one on the side, and secondly, as from your institute, World Institute for Peace, at this moment, what would you preach to the Gabonese? to the Niger Republic, to Mali, to all of them, Guinea, all of them. Yeah, for me, I believe that if those countries that have been hijacked by military, if they can be able to call for uh, democracy and even the leaders who hijacked the government, they can also be part of the contestant in any election. I believe if they can do this, it will be far better than having military regime over there. And secondly, I want to advise, as the Secretary Chairman of uh, World Institute for Peace, I want to advise those countries who, have, uh, who their leader have proved for over decades that they should resign. They should resign and call for fresh election and it should not be part of the contestants. So it is better for them to resign now if they do not want... And not have your cousin yes. come back again. Ah, he, thank you so much. They do not have their son, their cousin, their in-laws to mm. come back again. They should resign voluntarily and call for fresh election. And they should also not be part of the processes. But it will just make way. This will be a kind of honor mm. for every one of them. This All is right. my advice. I actually hear you say that. Um, this, if I recall you, you said that this kind of things cannot happen in Nigeria. But in my mind, I just remember that after all, you have um, a particular governor, I'm not going to mention him, who is not feeling well, who, who traveled, and then at some point he, he, he gave power to his deputy. And yet he still wants to be ensure that he knows everything that is happening. It means everybody just likes power. Power corrupts, absolute power corrupts, absolutely. Thank you. You have, you have said it. Everybody loves power. Even you, if they have, if they give you an offer to become, that you come and contest. I will not stay. I will not stay for fifty-six years. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but you go. I'll think about it. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right, yeah, that's where we end this conversation. That's a fine place to end this conversation. Thank you so much for watching. We have been chatting with Lamina. Kamaldin Omoto Yossi, who is Executive Director of World Institute for Peace. And it's been a wonderful time here on The Conversation. Wherever you're watching us, from Niger Republic, from Nigeria, from Gabon, we say embrace peace regardless. There's nothing that beats peace and freedom. I will see you next time. My name is Annabelle Oji. God bless you and yours. God bless Nigeria.